Okay. <laughs> hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I have two heavy hitters on the show today. They are the authors of, that's why I have two books, because two guests, actually, I bought them because you get amazing bonuses when you do, and they'll tell you all about it. It's on its way to become a New York Times bestseller. It is called The Plant-Based Athlete, and we have both the authors here today, Matt Frazier and Robert Cheek. Please welcome them both to the show. Congratulations on writing such not only a successful book, but a wonderful book. Thank you, Chef AJ. It is uh, awesome to catch up with you. It's been a while. I know. I haven't seen you for such a long time. How have you been doing, Matt? I've been, I've been, uh, I've been parenting. I've been a busy dad. We, my family moved from Asheville to Charlotte for soccer and my wife and Ellery, you know, Aaron and Ellery, uh, they were living in Asheville for two months while Holden and I were here. And I was supposedly homeschooling him during that time while also working and just, just a crazy period, but it's, it's all fun. I love it. Well, you're not only writing about plant-based athletes, you're raising a plant-based athlete. That's right. I have, I have two superstar plant-based athletes and we actually moved here for sports. We moved two hours away at, at age 11 for him. So. And yeah, they're still completely on a plant-based diet. That's right. They're both hundred percent vegan. And, uh, and I, just like we read about in the book, I think it's an advantage for them. Not, not a disadvantage whatsoever. Uh, I, their endurance is amazing. Their fitness is great. And their, their, their understanding and mindfulness around food, I think, is what's especially uh, amazing. Well, you know, what's going to be great is when, uh, when you write, maybe when you write the part two of this book, they can be the, uh, the chapters. I, I have wondered if, if they are the future of No Meat Athlete. I don't really know, but it's quite possible. Didn't you, I, I remember listening to a podcast with you once. Didn't you say your son was like recognized somewhere? You were, you were somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You recognized your son. Uh, yeah. So I had finally, after many years, written about him on No Meat Athlete, like a month ago, wrote, wrote a post all about him. And like the next day we went out to the Adidas outlet. We were buying some shoes because he needed new ones. Uh, and I like walked away and then I came back and there was this woman like excitedly talking to him, this, you know, middle-aged, maybe 40 year old woman. And I was like, what's going on? And then I started, and I was like, okay, she probably saw the Nomi Athlete post about him. And I went over and, and it turned out she had just recognized him from his Instagram. So she was, she just, it was like the first time someone has recognized him for his thing rather than via me. Uh, I didn't get into why the 40 year old woman was, was following the, uh, the 11 year old's Instagram, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, let me bring on your partner in crime in this book. Hey, Robert, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well, Chef AJ. How are you? I, I wore my kale shirt for you. So I'm sweating through it. This is like my fifth interview of the day and it's kind of a hot room up here. So I'm a hot kale mess right now. I need to be massaged like a kale salad. You guys have been working like maniacs to get this wonderful book out and the bonuses. I mean, you know, I think even if people didn't want to read the book, they should get it just for the bonuses. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. We, there's like, there's so many different food coupons and training plans and entries and drawing. It's like, it's like, it, I don't know. You don't even need the book. You throw the book away and still, still make money on the deal. <laughs> That's amazing. You want to, you want to talk, cause I know that they only have till, to, till the end of tomorrow, I think midnight tomorrow, Saturday, and they can get the book anytime, but if they want the bonuses, maybe you can talk a little bit about what they are. A lot of people like Mandy have already pre-ordered the book. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, yeah. So like that, that deadline is for the bonuses. It's also for us. Like that's, if you, if you just don't care about the bonuses, but you want to help us out, that's our cutoff for this New York times bestseller consideration, which we both, uh, have really been working hard for, don't know if we'll get it or not, but, uh, but tomorrow's our, our deadline. So yeah, that's, that's why we would like everyone as possible to, to buy it by then. Um, bonuses. Yeah. I mean, it's like you get two Nomad athlete products, one of a, a bunch of, uh, meal plans, training programs, um, like our sort of smaller scale ones. And then we've got like some of our flagship products, our big meal plan system, the marathon, half marathon, 5k, 10k running program, uh, plant-based guide to your first race of any of those distances, um, a, a fitness and muscle plan. If you're more, more Robert speed, trying to put on weight or transform your body. Um, and then, and then Robert, what, what have we got uh, from your end? We've got all the different coupons and then the, the contest entry where you can win a Vitamix and what else do we have there? Yeah, we've got all kinds of stuff. It's even hard to keep, keep up with. So Chef AJ knows this, you know this. I work with over 100 different brands uh, with my work with Vegan Strong. I got thousands, actually probably tens of thousands of products and coupons donated because I've been doing this with all of my book launches since I've been a self-published author for 11 years. That was the way I, I helped sell books was I always gave people some extra value, like real tangible value of like free product coupons, you know, or free products. And so I have a bunch of plant-based food products. And if people, they have to live in the USA to get them because I'm paying out of pocket to ship these. Um, but if they do order today, today or tomorrow, because this is the only time that counts for us to make this lifelong dream come true and make the bestseller list. If you are in the USA, 
and you do order today or tomorrow and, and forward your receipt to us. Or buy, um, you can go to the store and get it too and just forward yeah, that picture yeah. of that receipt. Absolutely, you can walk into your local uh, local store, your local bookstore in your town, which I've done and, and, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> you can do that. So yeah, forward your, your receipt regardless of where you get it. Uh, but we just ask that those, those for the physical bonuses, we ask if those receipts are dated today and tomorrow because it costs. It takes me 12 hours a day of manual work to make these and then thousands and thousands of dollars to ship them. But it's a price I'm willing to pay to send people some really special gifts to, to, to honor honor everyone who's taken a chance on this book. I mean, the book is, is well worth it on its own, of course, but this is just a way to help get more sales out the door and, and get us on that New York Times bestseller list, which will open up doors for the rest of our lives and will give us titles that no one can ever take away. Like those will always be there. Like you can always put New York Times bestselling author after our names. And I, I've been chasing that for 33 years. So that's why it means so much to me and why my wife, my brother, all these people in my community are helping me assemble these bonus packages of plant-based products and coupons to send out some, some physical bonuses. So, um, and we, we didn't mention, I don't think that Amazon just this morning put the book on sale. So it's not $25 anymore. Now it's like 17 or something. It just, yeah. I don't know how long it's going to last that price, but for some reason it's, it's there now. So people are buying it like crazy. So it's a good, good timing. Uh, if, if you're interested. To right. Check it out. And it's number 38 as of a second ago. Yeah. yeah. In the country. And, and that's, that's like Chef AJ style. That's, that's way up there. <laughs> yeah. And that's based on all books, Chef AJ. And that's what we wanted to do. And I don't want to talk too much because Matt hasn't been on here. Um, I just wanted to say that was our goal. Our goal was to go mainstream with this. We think the plant-based diet has, has, has come of age. It's, it's ready to be embraced by everybody. You know, uh, this is its time to shine um, in the athletic world too. And so that's what we're here to do. Wow. Laura says she wants to win the sessions with you too. And Julie just ordered from Amazon. And five minutes ago, Carla ordered, what's the name of the book? Awesome. Elizabeth says, it is The Plant-Based Athlete. Yes. And I don't think, Robert, you didn't, you didn't clarify that if you wanted to get all those bonuses, you need to forward those. Did you say the addresses? You, you can, it, like, just if you go to book.nomiathlete.com, there's all kinds of details about what the prizes are and all that. Uh, and it, it tells you where, there, where to, where to send it on, but right, and I'm going to put it in the chat and it's also in the show notes where they Perfect. have to send the receipt. Absolutely. Great. Great. So we have a question from somebody who is watching live. Uh, uh, it's from pony boy would love to know how to direct my university rugby playing sons who are not currently plant-based, but open to the idea. The trainer insists on meet, meet, me. So I hear this a lot guys from people like they, they want to be plant-based athletes, but whether it's at the collegiate level or the high school level, you know, their coaches say, no, you got to have, you know, animal protein. Yeah. You know what, AJ, this is, uh, I'm, I mean, Robert can chime in too, but like this one means a lot to me because I was kind of in, even after doing this for, for, I've been at it for 12 years now. Uh, but even after more than a decade of this, where I had experienced these benefits firsthand for my endurance, like they, they absolutely made me turn into a better, faster, more injury resistant runner. Um, my running is night and day since I went plant-based since I went hundred percent vegan. Uh, and so I, I knew these benefits firsthand, but honestly, it was not until I read this book in its final form after we spent the year, year and a half assembling it, um, that it finally struck like up until that point, if you would ask me this question, rugby players or, or strength athletes, um, people who need quickness and power, not just endurance, not just these like long distance sports where it kind of favors a, a lighter frame anyway. Um, you know, I would have said, yeah, it's, it can work for that, but I would not have had a, a lot of confidence that like, it's a really, really great choice. Perhaps the very best choice you could make as your diet, as far as performance goes. And it wasn't until I read this book and I learned about Olympic power lifters, um, strong men, strong women, uh, mixed martial artists. I mean, the furthest thing you can imagine from endurance athletes whose, whose body is who bet who are better when their body's really light. Um, and, but like, to me, that's, that's the huge benefit of this book is that it just like, even more than the tips and the how to, which is of course, you know, immensely valuable. And the, the, what these athletes eat in a day and then their recipes, like all that's great, incredibly practical. Uh, but really for me, it's, it, you read the whole book cover to cover and these stories just seep in and you just, by the end of it, it's like, it's like, come on, why are you telling me this again? I, I get it. Like <laughs> this diet works so well for sports, no matter what the sport is, because there are athletes at the world class at the top of their game, Olympians, pros, elites who are picking this diet because it's the best choice for their performance. Uh, and they all cite recovery. They say you recover faster from your workouts this way, uh, which keeps you from being injured. Uh, and if you're at a, at a top level, like a rugby player or, you know, someone who's a collegiate athlete, um, 
it's not just about avoiding injury, but you can actually get back out there and work out more often faster than, than your competition can. So like, of course, you know, if you're trying to keep weight on like a rugby player, you're going to need to make some effort to eat a lot of calories and, and make adaptations compared to someone who doesn't want a ton of muscle mass or body weight. Um, but, but and Robert can touch on some of that, give perhaps some, a little bit of how to that you might tell this person. Uh, but honestly, that's, I know this sounds like yet another pitch for the book. Um, that's what it does so well is it just, it just convinces you that like, wow, like I would not be nearly the only one who's doing this. Like there are a ton of people who do this and, and that just adds a lot of confidence to that choice. Nice. When you interviewed all these athletes for the show, was there a common denominator like a, a, that they all had in common when, when deciding to adopt a plant-based diet? Yeah. Yeah, there was, you know, many of them have different styles and different uh, ways of doing it. And that's the really, that kind of cool thing that there's no one size fits all, but they all came to a plant-based diet seemingly almost exclusively to reduce inflammation and to experience greater recovery. So, you know, I mean, I, I'm a you know, ethical vegan guy I came to this for veganism. Actually, Matt did too. Or originally yep. I came to veganism to help animals and all that. But what we see with professional athletes, elite athletes, world-class athletes who are already at the top of their game, they want to get even better. They want to have less soreness. They want to get more mileage out of their career. They want to extend their career. They don't want it to come to an end, you know, in, the, in their early 30s or something like that. And so they're all coming to, to find relief and, and, and relief from soreness, from, you know, constant chronic inflammation. And they've reported, it wasn't like we interviewed 60 athletes and we only wrote about the ones who said, yeah, it actually worked for me. They all said that. <laughs> they all said it in different ways. They all said, man, I can't believe I don't have that joint pain. I never thought I could wake up without it. I thought that was just part of aging. And by the way, when they say aging, they're like 25 or 32, you know, and they're dealing with this kind of stuff. And, and so this has allowed them to prolong their careers. And I'm so honored that we have athletes in the book, like Christine Varderos, Fiona Oaks, John Joseph, Rich Roll, uh, Rip Esselstyn, uh, Scott Jurek, who are all over 50. They're all over 50 and they provide so much inspiration for me as someone who's in my early forties to say, wow, I've got so much to look forward to as an athlete. Like it's not, I'm not done or maybe even reach my peak yet. And so, uh, so the, anyway, that's the, that's the common theme, Chef AJ. And then of course, Whole Foods. Uh, is, is really the foundation of their diets. Some will do the, the burgers and non-dairy ice cream. You know, we all do those things to some degree, but the whole foods and the anti-inflammatory properties are what really fuel these athletes. Nice. Heidi says, we already received our three copies and I'll be devouring it this weekend. And right. she, said she just ordered from Amazon. Cheryl, I just brought two. We'll gift one to a non-vegan coach. Diane just ordered from Amazon. I feel like like, oh my like, gosh. like a telethon. So it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Ring the bell. Says, Ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually have a belt. Every time you order. <laughs> Di says, I love this book. I can't put it down. So this idea that you need more protein if you're an athlete, who started that? <laughs> Robert, you can probably speak to this one. You wrote the lengthy section about uh, about the history of this and, and how money is behind so much of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't want to take too much airtime, but I but I but I can I can speak to this. So this idea that we need tons and tons of protein goes back about a hundred years or so, and especially really post World Wars, uh, this idea that this this nutrient protein was so revered, so important to maintain our muscle mass and structure for uh, you know hormone interactions. And that's, and that's all true. But then it just got out of hand. Then it became associated with masculinity. Then it became associated with fast food restaurants and family diners. And then the television came around and it became associated with TV dinners and sitting around the table, having protein as the center of the meal together. It was something that we thought was the heartbeat of the American diet, uh, which is kind of ironic, you know, because it stops a, you know, a heart to put that food on the, on the plate, if you want to call it food. And, and so this, that became the central idea for masculinity and maintaining muscle mass. And then the sports world, uh, you know, took the handles of that and, and just took it to like another level with the now multi, multi-billion dollar, in fact, over a hundred billion dollar sports supplement industry that is largely fueled in addition to 
multivitamins that people are consuming because they're not eating fruits and vegetables, it's largely whey and, and, and casein protein, which was a byproduct of cheese making, which somewhere around the 60s or 70s uh, was discovered that you could powderize this stuff, uh, put it into a bottle and sell it to people because it was really concentrated protein that's designed to take a, a baby calf, uh, you know, from 60 pounds to 600 pounds in a very short amount of time, or even up to a thousand pounds or, or more. And so this stuff really helps you, really helps you grow. The problem is it has insulin life like growth factor one in it too. And it can grow a lot of other things too. And, and including unfortunately uh, cancer tumor cells, which many people have experienced. Doesn't mean it will for everybody. Everybody is slightly different, but it's a pretty dangerous uh, product. One that Dr. T. Colin Campbell, who endorsed our book on the back cover has gone on record saying it is that, that, that way in casein, I think particularly casein is the most carcinogenic substance we, we've ever discovered. Like this is really a problem. And he says it with confidence as someone who's been on the chair of the highest committees and been doing this for 60 years. And so then the sports, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Joe Weider, the bodybuilding muscle magazine culture really, again, you know, propelled this sports supplement, animal-based protein, which then of course you associate beef and chicken or all these other meats and dairy and eggs into that same category of performance. But it hasn't actually done a whole lot for performance. Uh, ultimately with the, uh, the, the clogging of, of arteries and slowing blood flow. And so it actually has been a performance inhibitor for her, a number of people. Right. Uh, Susan says uh, she can't wait for her copy to arrive and that Amazon Canada also lists it as a bestseller. Yeah, yeah I, saw, I heard that. Last we checked, it was the 23rd most popular book in the entire country of Canada, but I haven't refreshed it. So it could be higher. Nice. Hey, this is a great question, guys, from Gina, who's watching live, because as you know, I'm a little bit older than you guys. I'm in my 60s, and a lot of my audience is, is women that are older. And Gina said, can you please ask them how this book might help us ladies that are 60-something? I mean, that's a great question, but I think, I think the obvious one is because I think, I think someone listening to the show who's 60 uh, is probably already on board with the diet, uh, but, but may not be moving as much as she once did. And that's just because that's what happens. We slow down as we get older. We don't have to, but, but that tends to be the habitual thing we do. Um, but exercise is, is so important. It's such a, an important component of health that it is kind of easy to ignore that if you already eat really well. I know because I did it for the past two years uh, during the COVID, I kept, I got really into like all this fancy, co not fancy, but just cooking of like fresh pastas and all these different things. And I kept telling myself, well, I eat plant-based. And so I, I, I started exercising at the beginning of that. And then I it faded away. Um, and I just, you know, like it, really the first time in my life, and I just turned 40 as well, just like Robert, um, I like started putting on some fat and stuff. And I was like, wait a minute, I got to get moving again. So uh, I definitely get it. Like it just, it just happens. We, we, we kind of have our, our society certainly encourages us to, to be sedentary and slow down. Um, but, but exercise is, is tremendously important. It's protective against cancer, obviously helpful with heart disease, uh, and all kinds of cardiovascular disease. Um, not to mention bone health, um, keeps more flexible, more limber, uh, prevent falls, all kinds of reasons to exercise. And I think what this book can do, if, if that's an area where like, if you're really just nailing the diet, if diet is dialed in and you're doing everything right, um, you know, what, what it can do is be the inspiration that will, that will get, make you want to move because there are a lot of athletes in this book uh, who are that age. Rip Elselton, not, I don't know if he's 60 quite, is he 60, Robert, or 59, Almost. 58? Almost. He's, a, yeah. he's within a year. Right. So he just had a, a swimming world record. Um, you know, it just, to me, like, to me, the stories are one of the best parts of this. It just, it just makes you inspired. It makes you excited. One of the athletes in this book, a mountain biker, a 24 hour mountain biker, reading her story before I went on an interview with her, Sonia Looney, um, literally for the first time I, I ran a hundred mile race, uh, eight years ago and had not wanted to do it since then, as much as it was a fond memory, reading her talk about how this eight hour suffer fest where she had to walk her bike through mud or something. And she reflected back on it and said, it was so terrible then, but now when I think back on it, it's such a positive, great memory that I did that. And I had it, it like just stirred up those memories in me. And I thought, man, like I, I want to do that again. So I think, I think the motivation inspiration, that's good, almost like a byproduct of what we're trying to do, which is convince you that you can do this on plant-based diet because all these athletes do it. And then we show you how, um, to me that it just gets you so excited. You find a role model and then, and then whoever that role model is, it's very likely that. Hydrix is a role model for us. 
Yeah, she's and uh, is she in a, I don't she yeah, she's she's one of the OGs. I don't know if we uh she's yeah. still she's like an, she still runs marathons. But if you're a lady in your 60s and you get two copies, you can actually use them. There you go. That's yet funny. another use for the book that we had not even anticipated. We should add that to the Amazon bullet points that you can do that with it. Oh, I've anticipated it. I've got boxes <laughs> of like 40 here at home and I'm turning <laughs> them up and down stairs. So I've anticipated the the byproduct of that. Anyway, it just it just adds to sort of this holistic sense. It makes you feel really good about the choices you've made so far um, and, and encourages you to, to do more because you'll find a role model and you'll find exactly what they eat likely in the back because 25 of them are featured back there with their whole day. And then it might send you down a new path with, you know, how to fuel around workouts. And so I, I would say the answer to that is, is largely inspiration if you've got the nutrition dialed in already. And, and I don't know that Ruth much about mentioned it. on page eight, Chef AJ, Ruth Heydrich listed on page eight as one of the original plant-based athletes who paved the way for so many others. Right, right, right. There it is, proof. Ruth, right there. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she's amazing. She did, is. Did, did you find, because you interviewed so many athletes, that there were particular sports that seemed to lend themselves more to people wanting to become plant-based, say, for example, runners versus football players? I mean, very quickly, I'll say, I think, you can see the trend, like Robert mentioned all these older athletes. A lot of the ones he mentioned are endurance athletes. And I think, I think it's because the people who've been at this the longest are the ones beca because the endurance athletes were doing this first. Uh, endurance sports tend to favor more, much more than genetics. They favor tricks and, and who can find the best strategy. So like ultra distance running is not at all about who's the best athlete. It's who's the best ultra distance runner, meaning who's figured out the best way to eat while you're, while you're doing it, the best way to eat, you know, manage to get your stomach to cooperate. Who's figured out the best recovery trick. I remember Mike Arnstein used to like sit at his desk wearing those quad, uh, those, those ab things that those ab exercise things, he would wear those on his quads that would electronic or electrically stimulate his quads. And that was one of his tricks and he was one of the best ultra runners. So no one could really question it, but anyway, people were always looking for this edge and, and they found it with a plant-based diet. So it started with endurance sports. That's where people got the examples and started to believe that it could be done. Um, so you see that in the older set, I guess, and it's still happening with younger people, but now that, that kind of paved the way for people to experiment in, in strength sports um, and, in, and in muscle sports. And so I think you see that sort of trend that the younger athletes, there are many more who are doing the bodybuilding or, or powerlifting stuff on plant-based diets. They tend to be the younger ones. Um, and I think it's just because the people who were the endurance people got into it earlier. That's great. I, were there particular versions of the plant-based diet that an athlete tended to follow? Like maybe, for example, was a lower fat plant-based diet better for one type of sports and maybe a higher fat better than other sports or it's just all over the board? Well, what we're finding is that the diet that's mostly made up of complex carbohydrates tends to be good for pretty much everybody. If you can just, it seems like that's conducive to long distance running, but maybe not so much for powerlifting or bodybuilding or, or what have you. But but that's what we found to be the case. We found to be the case that if you get the majority of your calories from complex carbohydrates, as much as 70% or so, 70% complex carbohydrates, maybe 15 or so percent of protein and fat, or maybe 10% protein, 20% fat, all these different scenarios that are just, you know, slightly just off by a little bit, that tends to be it. The majority of calories coming from complex carbohydrates. And, and here's why those foods pack the most nutritional punch. That's just the way it is. That's Dr. Joel Furman's Andy score. That's Dr. Greger's daily dozen. That's the nutrients per calorie. That's the science of the food. They have the greatest amount of micronutrients. They have the, the highest levels of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytonutrients, fiber, and water. And, and, and those are the types of foods. So I'm talking like sweet potatoes and yams and all kinds of potatoes. I'm talking about green vegetables. I'm talking about berries. Uh, bananas, mangoes, oats, lentils, uh, legumes of all types, different types of grains and pseudo grains, quinoa and, and the like. This works. This works for long distance athletes as it works for powerlifters and bodybuilders and boxers and mixed martial artists. In fact, I want to add this one thing, Chef AJ. There are particular sports. Matt talked about endurance running, but there was this massive wave. Maybe it's calmed down a little bit and it's just accepted now, but there was a massive wave. You remember this, Matt? When mixed martial artists, uh, you know, yep. all these all these mixed martial artists adopted a plant-based diet for their greater endurance. In fact, Brendan Brazier was uh, was coaching a bunch of them, which was hilarious because he's like the like the quietest, shyest, 
you know, mild mannered guy. And he's in the audience where these guys are beating each other up in the octagon. <laughs> and he's sending me photos like, well, here I am. And, you know, these guys fighting. Um, <laughs> that wasn't my Brennan impersonation. Or anything, <laughs> I actually do have one, but um, uh, Marco Clorella. <laughs> um, I hope he's not watching. Um, I just wanted to mention that. The, these people, boxers, mixed martial artists. Now now the trend is bodybuilders and powerlifters. Who knew? Who knew that Nimai Delgado, uh, Tori Washington, Corinne Sutton, uh, Ramona, Natalie, uh, Harriet, all these great athletes in the bodybuilding world would now be doing this thing. It's It just goes in waves. The runners were first and, and now everybody's doing it. I'm just so happy, like I told you guys on the cruise, you're going to get all the people to become vegan because I mean, nobody, you know, nobody listens to an old lady, but people want to be fit. And, and I think that's always been the biggest sticking point, especially with men, that it's not manly to eat plants. Did you, did you find that most of the athletes adopted a plant-based diet? Because I'm guessing there are a few that were plant-based since birth, but most of them not, like just to get some kind of edge on their performance? Yeah, that's why they came to it, right, Matt? Yeah, I mean, there are there are certainly the ethical ones, or there are the ones who have been vegan since birth. Um, but yeah, another like speaking of just trends, that's that's what's happening much more, and especially when you talk about the these top level athletes, the NBA players, the NFL players, uh, some from Premier League or or you know world class European soccer players. Uh, at those sports, I mean, for better or for worse, you can't afford to make a choice that that is not going to be the best choice for your performance, right? Like th- you're not going to find many people who uh, despite whatever it does for their performance, they're going to be vegan because that's their ethical thing. There might be a few of those. Uh, perhaps Colin Kaepernick is one. I don't know. Um, but it's just the money involved, not, not just, not just for them, but for their, for generations beyond that the amount of money they stand to earn and their legacy um you, I don't think many of them are going to gamble with a diet that because it's for some other reason than performance. Um, even long-term health is probably a, a much, much secondary to how it's going to help them perform right now. So those are the ones that they are clearly doing it for performance reasons and, and only those. Uh, and, and perhaps they develop other, I shouldn't say only those, perhaps they do have ethical leanings or environmental awareness uh, or, or maybe just long-term concerns about what will happen after your, your two and a half year NFL career is over. Um, because a lot of people have, have very poor quality of life after that, unfortunately. Um, and it's partially due to the massive amounts of calories they consume and, and the form they consume them in. So, uh, I think there is some awareness of these things, but, but at that, those highest levels, performance is, is dominant as far as the reason people are choosing it. Uh, and what, what better class of athletes to, to demonstrate that, that a plant-based diet can work than, than the very best ones. Uh, I'd rather have, I'd rather have those people choosing it for, for performance reasons than others, because, then we can look to them and say, well, if they're, well, if it's good enough for them for performance, then it's good enough for me for that too. Nice. Uh, Claudia wants to know if you cover any exercise routines in the book. What's interesting about this book is that it's not an exercise guide because there's, I mean, there's a million exercise programs out there and, and that doesn't really have any, anything to do with plant-based nutrition. Although our previous books did have workouts in there just to make those books a standalone resource. But what this book does have is it has a day in the life routine, which does list the workouts. So it lists, you're actually, you're not getting just, you know, my agenda or Matt's workout program, which a lot of our other books were like that, our way of doing things. What we did was we featured 25 world renowned plant-based athletes and we showed their day in the life routine, which was everything from waking up and their first meal of the day and breakfast and lunch and dinner and their workouts. And they described their workouts and their, and their pre and post-workout nutrition and their recovery protocols, which could be ice therapy, heat therapy, sports massage therapy, um, meditation, foam rolling, uh, sauna, steam room, all these types of things. So to, I want to just be transparent about that. You're not going to see lists of like, okay, here's a chapter all about workouts. Make sure you do uh, 10, 10 sets of five reps, of nothing like that. But what you're going to do is actually get better than that in my opinion, you're going to get what the best in the world are actually doing. And that's not to say that we're all trying to be the best in the world, but we can, we, there are some things we can learn from them, their habits, their, 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 their uh, types of approaches they take. We can we kind of glean some information from that and apply it to ourselves in a real world applicable way that is um, transparent and authentic to who these athletes are. Nice. Thank you. 
So let's see, I just saw a question from Jeff. Do you guys experience less pain and muscle aches after working out or competing, eating our way as compared to when you ate sad? You know, if I'm honest about that, I don't, I don't, when I was, when I was eating standard American diet, I was 26 and younger. Um, and so I wasn't experiencing a lot of muscle aches then. Um, so I, I really can't speak to that. I, I never did experience them and I still don't experience them. Uh, so it's certainly not a hindrance for me. Uh, and perhaps now if I went back to a standard American diet at age 40, uh, my experience would be somewhat different than, than it was when I was 25. Uh, but no, I mean, if I'm, if I'm being honest, I didn't really have major soreness or anything that I had, I had typical running soreness and I do have very little of that now, but who knows my, my workouts have changed. So I just, I just can't speak. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be trying to like every possible question say, yeah, yeah, play with that, made that better, made that better, made that, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. Um, so honestly, I, I don't know. And, and Chef AJ and, and Jeff, was it that asked the question? Mm -hmm. That's a really great one because I'm in the same camp as Matt. I became vegan at age 15. People ask me, what was bodybuilding like before? I don't know. I wasn't doing it. I became vegan before bodybuilding, but that is the beauty of this. And I'm being sincere, Chef AJ, that's the beauty of the plant-based athlete because almost everybody interviewed in the book talks about their life before plant-based and after. There are only three who have been vegan since birth in the book. And guess what? One of them is an Olympic medalist. One is a world champion. And one is a female professional bodybuilder at the highest level uh, who's never had animal protein in her life. And that really puts that protein question to rest. And so that's the really cool thing is that you hear other people's stories. Even if Matt and I don't have those personal experiences, that's why we conduct interviews of the world's greatest plant-based athletes. And we can write about them as narrators and tell their stories. And I am floored. I told you in person, Chef AJ at your house, not that long ago. I get moved by the stories when I read them. They're just so inspirational and aspirational. I can't wait to just try to find the next level of myself, like another version of myself that's just a little bit better, a little bit more confident, a little bit, uh, a little bit more... Um, excited about, you know, doing something fitness related again, inspired by these incredible stories. So those and are, it, and even though we don't have those, that specific experience of, you know, improve or less, less muscle soreness, uh, David Carter certainly does in a much more extreme fashion than, than either you or I would have with the type of working out we did compared to what he did and, right. and the way we ate the amount of calories we ate compared to what he ate. Um, and Chris Paul, I don't know if this is in the book, but I've heard the anecdote from you many times, what he said about like, he just thought be part of being a professional uh, NBA player was the next day soreness that it was, you know, no wonder all the impacts, the jumping up and down hardwood floor. Uh, of course you're going to be sore the next day and it's going to feel terrible every morning, but Robert, you can speak to the exact quotes better. I mean, I think he said he just never knew once he went plant-based to save his career, he said he never knew it didn't have to be that way. Like you can wake up and feel really good the next day. So, you know, yeah. e even if Robert and I don't have a and B comparisons to how it was then to how it is now, uh, there are people who, who honestly, you should listen to more than you listen to us, uh, about, about that. And chef AJ, you know, the cool thing about Chris Paul, who's one of the greatest NBA basketball players in the world. He's going to the hall of fame and he's in the playoffs right now and got MVP votes this year at age 36 and the later years of his career, he actually said, uh, in an interview, and I was actually there at, at the game changer premiere. I met him. I was there for that interview where he was saying that he almost wanted to keep it a secret because he was seeing so much benefit from a plant-based diet. Here he is one of the best basketball players in the world. And he's saying, I am seeing so much of a benefit. I can you know, get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. I'm not achy and sore and limping. Like I always have been for the last 15 years. He's like, I almost, I want to keep that to myself, you know, and not tell people. And, and, and of course, look what happened. He, he, he's doing this for two years now and he's the best player he's ever been in his life. And, and, um, uh, the results speak for themselves. And, and now he is talking about a little bit because he realizes, man, my teammates, my, my friends, my you know, others could benefit from this too. So um, just, a, just kind of a fun side story about, about that guy. Hey, so Gina wants to know, did you interview Carl Lewis? I did via Twitter, <laughs> but it was very, <laughs> it was very brief. And I was trying to make sure I wasn't being too much of a fanboy because I had posters of him on my wall as a kid. And I didn't want to like turn him off from being interviewed properly for the book. So I only did got, you know, he was vegan, Robert, when, when you had posted, I've heard you say that before. Did you know he was vegan? Then? No, no I didn't. Okay. he was just my favorite athlete. And I was, you know, 
10, 11 years old in, in 91, 92, when he was winning all the gold medals in the late eighties, I was eight years old. And I had poster him on, on my wall. I only took it down a few years ago in my old bedroom at my mom's house where I grew up. Um, I probably still have it somewhere. I didn't know that, but then to be able to, during the writing of this book to reach out to him, I remember I posted about it online and I actually wrote a newsletter about it. And it was one of the, the most popular newsletters I ever wrote because it was so authentic, like how big of a deal that was. Cause he, I mean, he's iconic. I mean, 10 Olympic medals, nine gold medals. And he said, and this is important, the best years, the, the, the best performance years of my life were right after 1991 when I became vegan. And he uses the word vegan, not plant-based. Like I love it. So we interviewed him, um, but just got like a quote or two and it didn't end up making it in the book because other athletes developed much bigger stories for us to use. But um, he's a legend. He's yeah, a legend. that's so cool. So Sylvia says, you guys look so handsome and healthy. She's sold, placing her order now and she's sure you guys will be New York Times bestselling authors. So. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Sylvia. Especially for the handsome part. That's, that's uh, <laughs> That goes further than anything else. <laughs> That's funny. So, you know, Matt and I, we bonded over calorie density. And I'm just wondering how we can teach, you know, not necessarily the athletes, the elite athletes in your book, but so many people that are athletic, they're worried, they're going to be so tired on a plant-based diet. And a lot of it's because they're just, when you're eating animal products and processed food of very high caloric density, plants have much lower caloric density, people have to learn to eat more. So I don't know if you guys work with athletes that are just switching over, but how do we skew caloric density in their favor so that they're eating enough? Yes. A great question. Uh, and by the way, on that note, uh, we absolutely did bond over that. And you said earlier that, that no one's going to listen to an old lady on the cruise or something like that. First of all, I, don't <laughs> continue, I don't consider you an old lady, but, but you completely changed uh, my wife's life. And as a result, mine and her health. Uh, and she actually just completed a, a not, not completed. She today ran, I guess, probably her 380th straight run. Um, and, and she's going strong. She's not planning to stop this year long running streak. Um, and, and she literally everything changed after that cruise. When we saw your talk there, eat to the left of the red line, uh, all that, it was the first we'd heard those concepts. I mean, I had vaguely heard about it, but never, never presented that way. And it, and it was, you know, it just literally like that, that was the day that her whole health outlook shifted. Uh, so we, we are immensely grateful for that. And, uh, every time I think of calorie density, I think of chef AJ and that red line, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, it's funny. It's, it's the opposite, right? Like the plant-based diet is so great if you do it right for, for losing weight because you, you can just eat the right foods and then the calorie density makes it automatic in a way. You still get full. And as long as you can, can as long as you follow it and are disciplined, uh, the weight comes off. So the problem is athletes go plant-based and, and if they don't know, and really they, there are, there's not a lot of nuance to eating well in a, on a plant-based diet for fitness. That was one of the great things that this, this book and the day in the life taught us. There's lots of different ways to make it work. It's not, it's not one specific way that you might think if you had only read one person's approach to plant-based diet for, for, for sports. Uh, there's lots of ways and, and it's easy to do it. And, and it's hard to go wrong if you just do a few things right. Um, but someone who's new to it and doesn't know anything about it, uh, very easy for them just to remove the, the calorie dense food sources from their plate, uh, the meats, the cheeses, the eggs, they remove that and then they replace it without realizing it with really great healthy foods that happen not to be calorically dense at all. So they still get just as full, except now they've, they've lost 25% of their calories from their daily diet without realizing it. And these are the stories that, that we hear when someone comes back a month later and says, man, I tried that for a month, but I had no energy. So now I'm back to eating this way again. And, and what, where they go wrong, and, and we do warn people against this all the time now, um, is that as an athlete, you have to keep your, your calories up. So to me, there are two ways to do that. Well, there are three ways to do that. One, you can just keep eating a whole lot. You can just eat more and more and more until you're completely uncomfortable. Maybe you'll get lucky and expand your stomach over time, uh, but that's, that's no fun. And, and it, honestly, it doesn't stick because it's painful. It, it doesn't feel good to get that full. Uh, second choice would be what you mentioned. I think you kind of mentioned this, choosing calorically dense foods, making calorically dense food choices. This is more Robert's area than mine. I, whenever I ask him about this, he tells me sweet potatoes and beans. That's what I always get out of him when I ask for calori cal calorically dense food choices. Um, but you know, you can pick the right, the right whole grains. Um, you can pick nuts and seeds. Uh, we tend to steer people away from oil. It's, it's kind of, some athletes use it, some don't, um, you know, but for, for certain, a certain athlete in oil, oil would be kind of a targeted, very calorie dense source, very dense source of calories if you wanted it to be, but you know, then you got to think about long-term health and all that. So that's the sort of food route. And maybe Robert can suggest some of his favorites because he as a bodybuilder has always paid more attention than that than I have. 
Um, simply eating to hunger has typically been enough for me as a runner because I didn't care if I was losing weight. As long as I was getting my workouts in, I actually was happy to be lighter because it made it easier to run. Um, but then the final one for me is just because plant-based diets can fill you up on so few calories, uh, the flip side of that, which is a good thing, is that you actually digest that food pretty quickly. And you can eat again two or three hours after eating a plant-based meal. Uh, it's not, not the right strategy always if you're trying to lose weight. Um, although Aaron, my wife, snacked all day after she started talking to you. She just had, uh, it would be snacks of Brussels sprouts or, or I don't know, kale that she, that she dehydrated. Um, or maybe not even dehydrated. Maybe that's, that's not, not uh, part of Chef AJ's plan. I don't remember. But anyway, um, but for me, it was, if I wanted to get, keep my calories up or add weight at any time, which now and then I'll, I'll try to put on some weight just, just to look different. Um, I just, I can add meals. If, if I eat an extra meal before I otherwise would, because I, if I don't, if I go on my own, like just based on hunger, I won't eat till 10 a.m. But if I am trying to put on weight, I'll just add an extra meal at 7 a.m. And I'll add another, uh, you know, a tablespoon or two of peanut butter before bed to get another, whatever that amounts to, 250 calories or something. Um, so like for me, that that's sort of the answer is just eat more frequently rather than try to eat more at any one meal. That, that has what is what stuck as far as habit change goes, like eating more frequently is way easier. Uh, I'm much, I have much less resistance to eating more frequently than I do to try to eat massive meals and stuffing myself. Nice. Uh, Kathy says, did you guys interview any tennis players? Yeah, we sure did. Some great ones. Yeah. Um, Sharon Feichman, um, I interviewed, she's playing, she just finished playing in the French open uh, a couple days ago, actually. And she has her, her highest world ranking she's ever had. Um, I reached out to Venus Williams. Um, I've been in touch with her, I don't know, agent or assistant in the past, but Venus is pretty hard to get a hold of. She's a pretty famous athlete. So I, I actually wrote, I wrote a whole section about Venus for the book, but we weren't able to in include it because I didn't get the actual personal interview to get direct quotes and all that. Uh, even though I know a lot about her and there's plenty of her interviews online and to extract quotes from and such, but we talk about Venus and Serena Williams. Uh, and of course, Novak Djokovic, who's the greatest male tennis player in, in the world. So you, it's, it's, it's interesting. You have the top male and female tennis players in the world over the past decade or so, plant-based. And now you have Sharon Feichman, uh, and she's not the only one. There's, there's uh, at least two others, uh, male and, and female, on the uh, professional tennis circuit right now um, who are also plant-based. But Sharon, we did sit down and interview, which, and it was really funny, Chef AJ, because Believe it or not, she did the interview with me, like basically in between matches at the U.S. Open. She was the last athlete uh, listed in the book. The, I mean, the last one we got in right before we had to submit it to the publisher. <laughs> so she was like at the U.S. Open competing and, and doing interviews like, you know, from the hotel. And by the way, her fiance, this is pretty cool. He's an Olympic silver medal winning figure skater. And he is plant-based now too. And in a weird random turn of events, he just recently teamed up with Olympic gold medal uh, figure skater, Megan Duhamel, who made the recipe that we emailed out today. The, um, uh, where is it? The brown, uh, a sweet potato br uh, brownie recipe. And now they're like a plant-based figure skating duo, Sharon Feichman's fiance and Megan Duhamel. And now there's, it's, this is, what, what are we doing? Taking over figure skating now? Plant-based diets are taking over everything. They already took over bodybuilding, powerlifting, long distance running, and, and now tennis, now figure skating. What's next, Chef AJ? Give me a sport. Uh, <laughs> let's take over fishing. Let's take over fishing. Let's <laughs> athletes take over fishing and no, now no fish are caught. And you just like, uh, I don't know, you, you, you bring up a, I don't know. Uh, bowling. Oh, How about bowling? There um, we go. Plant-based bowling. PBA is the uh, professional bowling circuit. It's plant-based athlete, PBA. <laughs> <laughs> that, exactly. I like that. Let's, Okay, that's where my that's all my energy is going to go towards that. I think it's a great return on investment. Right, let's go after the bowling circuit. Does anyone know who the very first plant based athlete was? You'd have to go back I mean, to gladiators, right? Yeah, it depends who you're considering athlete. Gladiators yeah. would be. You'd have wow. to go back to gatherers uh, from the hunter gatherer or, or gatherer hunter era, and 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 there were. You seen that cartoon? You know, like you, uh, you know, the caveman, the guy, little caveman, the young adolescent caveman guy. He goes up to his uh, uh, mother and father and says, "Hey, mom, dad, I'm, I'm a gatherer." Yeah, who chooses? <laughs> <laughs> who chooses to only gather? And not, not what, what shame he brought his family. <laughs> right, it's a great. I've seen Sorry. Dr. Gregor has posted like studies from the 1920s or 30s about about maybe it was even earlier than that, like the 
1910s about, about vegetarian, uh, I think athletes or runners in particular. Uh, and, and they were, they've looked at them. And, I mean, the, the results were positive for vegetarians, which is why Quaker shared it. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought it was cool that people were even, I, I mean, I just didn't know people were even doing it back then, like consciously. Even in the Olympics, some of those were, were Olympic athletes from 1920s and 30s who were plant-based. And then you, you got to go forward to where it became more popular, like Edwin Moses, who was mostly plant-based, and Marina uh, Navratilova and, and others. Um, Martina, sorry, Martina Navratilova. Uh -huh. uh, um, yeah, back in the 60s, 70s. Andreas Colling, Bill Pearl. Uh, we mentioned some of those historical figures in the book, but it goes back, it goes way back, you know, way back to gladiator times, you know, eating barley and, and throwing spears. Yeah. Well, who was the one that you think maybe first got attention? Because I'm thinking instead of putting athletes on weedy boxes, maybe put them on like bags of kale or something. Yeah, <laughs> or on Rip's Big Bowl box. Yeah, kale, yeah. Um, first, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, like, I mean, you think Carl Lewis definitely got attention. Out. Yeah. Yeah, he stands out, but he wasn't as outspoken maybe as like a, like a Brendan Brazier, but there was still a gap way in between. There's like, you know, because Brent, uh, Brent, well, no, Brent, because Brendan was like mid, mid 90s and Carl Lewis was 91. And so, yeah, it was really that somewhere around that era of the, of the 90s, I think. Um, so I think we put those like Brendan Brazier and Carl Lewis uh, in that category uh, of people who like at least made it popular. Nice. I just saw a question. Hold on. It just jumped. It was about what do you say? Darn. Up to, uh, I'm so sorry. It was a good question. Ah, here it is from Susanna. What do you say to the critics that provide the names of professional athletes that have gotten injured after shifting to a vegan diet and blaming the diet, trying to discredit a plant-based diet? I mean, you look, you look at all the other athletes who are injured who are not plant-based. It's, it's a, a thousand to one. It's a million to one. I mean, look at the, the NBA is falling apart right now because they had a, a short layoff season and it's a whole uproar thing. Um, people are getting injured like crazy uh, who are not plant-based. Anyone wants to make, anyone wants to make a, a headline, Chef AJ. So, so Cam Newton was, went plant-based and he was actually favored to win the NFL MVP this past season. And, and yeah, he, and he was actually overcoming an injury and a plant-based diet helped him overcome the injury. And then he got hurt again, which happens if you've already been previously injured, you're probably more likely to get that same injury to happen again to your shoulder, your knee, whatever it is. So he got injured. He might even be the, who someone's thinking of here because he's a pretty high profile athlete. Mm -hmm. That That's not a, a, a cause and effect and isolated incident to say, this is to blame this plant-based diet. The very thing that helped them recover and even made them an MVP favorite in the most popular sport in America. So you, you, you just can't say it that way. And, and you have to look at all the other people, including the ones we wrote about in our book, where their careers only bounce back, like Venus Williams, Sharon Feichman, David Carter, Rich Roll, because of a plant-based diet that helped them overcome their injury and inflammation. So I just say the statistics, a thousand to one. You know, that's yeah, they're always point. trying to blame the kale, aren't they? Well, Dale made a hilarious comment. Instead of, there used to be a television show called Bowling for Dollars. Now we can have Bowling for Collards. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of puns. Last time on the show, Chef AJ, we had like a bunch of t-shirt ideas. And today we got one from interviewing <laughs> Corinne Sutton with carb cycling. I talked about a bowl of pasta riding a bike as Corinne was talking about his carb cycling and bodybuilding. Oh, that's funny. Victoria said, I just ordered, I'm looking forward to reading and seeing what it can do for a mature female closing in on 65. Where did the, where did the majority of the athletes you interviewed stand on supplements? Cause so, so many people, you know, want, you know, protein powders and things like that. If they're, if they think they're going to be doing a lot of sports. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them, I would say it's mixed. Um, I would argue there are probably more who don't use supplements in our book than as a percentage than, than if you look at all athletes across the board at this level, I would, I would bet that more athletes who are omnivorous choose to use supplements. That could be wrong, but I just think some of the plant-based athletes have a little bit more mindfulness around what they're putting in their body. And they, they just, you know, they realize they can get it from food. Uh, so I don't know. I, I didn't find like a broad opposition to supplements. Some people use them. Some people worry about using them because they worry about uh, being disqualified, you know, for, whatever might happen to be in some proprietary blend that they didn't realize was in there. That's a real risk. Um, you know, almost everybody, I think everybody takes B12 supplement. I don't know if we came across someone who, who we even talked to about not taking B12. Um, and you know, some take more, some, some don't, some only do B12. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think Dotsy Bao, she's one who, I don't remember she takes supplements, but she mostly listens to her body, doesn't try to hit macro numbers or anything. Uh, and she's an Olympic medalist, by the way. Uh, you know, so she does very natural. I think she said something that she doesn't take many supplements, maybe just B12. I could be mistaken on that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, so plenty of protein powder, but, but plenty don't take protein powder. And, and some use other foods as supplements, like Nick Squires, California uh, deadlift guy, power lifter. He eats uh, Beyond Burgers and stuff, or Impossible, I forget which one. Uh, and, and I think he's viewing that as a protein source for him. That's one of his ways of getting it. And, and I don't know if he takes protein powder, but that, you know, if you're, if you're eating Beyond Burgers, then you may not need protein powder if, if you thought you did before, because this is also a, a sort of dense protein source. Um, it's not one that almost any other athlete in the book chose, but yeah, I don't know. Robert, any other thoughts about supplements for athletes? Yeah, I, I think uh, you, you nailed it. A lot of people are just really relying on, on food. Like Rip Esselstyn set a world record relying on food. You know, I mean, some people, it's really a nuanced thing, Chef AJ. It's like, if you're, if you're an Ironman triathlete and you've got to compete for like eight hours in a day, you've got to take some electrolytes, you've got to take some things that are, you know, what you might consider slightly unnatural because you're doing something that's unnatural. You're doing an extreme sport. And, and Scott Jurek or others, people might use gels and things like that. But by and large, most people are, are really fueled by plants. And you can see that in their, in their day in the life sections. Um, some may have their little preferences here and there, but I think what we're learning is that the plants pack a pretty powerful punch and that you can even fuel Olympic medal winning performances by the power of plants alone. And that's one of the messages we hope to communicate in the plant-based athlete and, uh, and super excited to take this message mainstream. I love that. By one I more thing there. The power of plants. Sorry. One more thing is that a lot of people, and, and I'm one of them, you can use foods, whole foods as supplements or, or in other cases like derivatives of whole foods like tart cherry juice. Uh, is a wonderful supplement that that is anti-inflammatory and a lot of ultra runners, including Scott Jurek, one the best ultra runner ever, at least up until 2015, uh, and, and even after a little bit. Uh, you know, he he would take tart cherry juice in, ahead of time or while he was running his 100 mile, 135 mile races. Uh, and so, in the other, all the other, and if you've ever run an ultra, you know everybody's popping vitamin I, they call it, which is ibuprofen, because it's like it feels like a miracle drug when you take it 60 miles into a hundred mile race. It's like, everything doesn't hurt for, for the next five miles. Um, but, but Scott didn't, Scott made this more mindful choice and chose tart cherry juice. Similarly, you get people taking uh, beetroot powder or beet juice because of what it does uh, for your endurance instead of, you know, you could many other sort of, it, it's like legalized doping. People will say um, ginger turmeric. These are also really, really great anti-inflammatory foods that can be used post-workout or during workout to, to stave off inflammation. So like you can, you can get smart about it and use these foods, very, very powerful foods like supplements. Um, and some of the athletes do that. And so I think, I think there's that more mindful approach that, that you kind of see throughout the book. Yep. Diana said, I just ordered, downloaded the bonuses. This is great. Thank you guys. All right. You know what I love about your work, Matt, is that you're creating things that athletes can use that are healthy, you know, because a lot of those things like the gels and the bars, they're just like, just basically sugar and you're making them whole foods. Yeah. We have a product called Plant Bites that is, uh, is meant to be eaten while you are working out. And it is, it is literally made from, from dried fruit. And that's like, that's like it. There's a little bit of, uh, what's it called? Tapioca, the root, uh, I think it's cassava root. Is that the name of it? Yeah. There's that in there. Um, but even that was at least as whole. Um, and they taste good. I tried them on they the- They taste air. great. Yeah, yeah, they're like snacks. Actually, the, uh, I forget, which, uh, the, uh, the berry was my favorite. You tried them on the air, is that what you said? I tried, yeah. I tasted them on the air. We did a taste test and, I, and there was three of them and, and I, I think it was the berry that I liked the best. <laughs> yeah, I like the berry one too. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I think that's really cool. I like, I like trying to make these, as I like to call them, mindful supplements where, where we, you know, be a little smart about it and, and do it with some, a sense of, uh, you know, a right. consciousness, I guess. Like Richard it. Hubbard says hello to my friends Robert and Matt. Love oh, I know Richard them. Hubbard. Sure. I know Richard Hubbard too. We met on tour, and he's been uh, one of the biggest supporters of vegan bodybuilding. Period in in recent years, and I was just on his podcast as well. So, Richard Hubbard, thank you for tuning in, and also for hosting some you know book giveaways and stuff with your with your audience. Yep. I appreciate you, man. Hey, so Dina says, did you interview any skiers or hockey players, plant based ones? Yeah, yeah. Julia, Julia Murray is a, 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 a former Olympic skier and now a holistic nutritionist and a really strong advocate for our book. She's in Canada. Also, 
um, uh, Kevin Hill. Kevin Hill uh, won a uh, gold medal or silver medal in, in uh, snowboarding, and he won the X Games here, I think in Aspen, perhaps, a gold medal in the X Games in snowboarding. And I watched the video. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty extreme sport. And, and Nick Squires, who's a, a, a record-setting powerlifter, is also a hockey player. He's a big 240-pound guy you do not want to get. He picks up 600 pounds off the ground. I can only do half of that. He, I mean, he is incredibly strong, and he's a hockey player, too, and big fan of hockey. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, George LaRock. George LaRock was the, one of the greatest enforcers the NHL has ever known. I've had him in the front seat of my car, barely fit him. He's six foot six, 300 pounds. As a as a former hockey player, he is massively big. Even when I was my biggest and most muscular, I was like flexing in photos next to him, and I was I was so tiny. Um, so yes, we did. And there, Rich Roll, when we were on Rich's podcast on Monday, we did Rich Roll, or that Rich Roll episode came out. He told us about someone we didn't know about a Boston Bruins player who apparently is yeah. just lighting it up. Yes, uh, I've heard of that player because of the game changers, but I wasn't remembering it. And, and right. I, I probably tried to reach out to him, but some of the more famous athletes I couldn't reach. But right. but yes, we did act, actively interview and their quotes are in the book. George LaRock has quotes in the book. Julia Murray has not only quotes in the book, but like grocery shopping list and all that. She's the skier. Um, and then Kevin Hill has a quote in the book. He's the snowboarder. Chef AJ, there are so many athletes. I'm there. not an athlete and I even have a quote in the book. Yeah, <laughs> and we say it all the time. We're, we're trying if to if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Yeah, we're trying to prepare people for healthy eating and for planning ahead and being consciously prepared. Chef AJ says regarding things like junk food, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. So you got to make conscious decisions to keep that temptation away. Yep. Pat G says, "Are you still bodybuilding, Robert? I miss you along with Brendan since the San Francisco Veg Fest a long time ago. Miss your ponytail too." Yeah, yeah, that, that PT cruiser parked out back, we used to call it, that ponytail, <laughs> hence the PT. Um, no, I haven't competed in bodybuilding in about a decade, but I've been in the best shape of my life uh, after age 40. It's, I, it's, I admit it suffered the last couple of months with the stress of releasing one of the world's most popular books, and I fully admit that. But I, I got in the best shape of my life um, by my 41st birthday about uh, four months ago. And uh, I'm still weightlifting. I was going five days a week recently until I am doing 15 hours a day on the computer for the book launch. But uh, never say never, you know, I'm inspired by people in the book. And I might, I, who knows, you might see me in posing trunks on video one of these days. Like, hey, I knew we still had it in them. And, and so who knows, I might be back. And, and yeah, I miss you too. And uh, I went to San Francisco Veg Fest six years in a row and, you know, spent 15 years on tour, seeing people like Richard and so many others on tour. So Hope to be back to that soon. Hey, people are praising the compliment of uh, uh, products, Matt. And there's a question oh, cool. from somebody, interestingly enough, named AJ. Do they have any artificial sugars? No. Uh, I don't know that I don't have that ingredients memorized offhand, but that is not something we would put in uh, in those things. Yeah, and so, you don't even put like stevia in. You make it pretty no, clean. No. Yeah. Oh, she's talking about the protein. Yeah, no, there's no sweetener whatsoever in there because none of our team can stand the taste of those fake things. Uh, we hate it. Like anyone who's been eating this way for a long time, you like detect it. And I can tell it if I eat a sweet thing that, that if I drink a beer that has, and there is some now like dogfish head brewery puts a monk fruit extract, which is like natural. That's kind of cool, but I can't, I can't drink it because I, I have this, this allergy to those things, not a real allergy, but a taste. I just detect them and I, and I hate them. So yeah, even the artificial, like, and that's complement protein is awesome because I mean, some people get it and they're like, I hate this. It tastes like dirt because they mix it with water and they don't eat plant-based diets. But like it's, we made it so that it tastes like nothing. You put it in the fruit smoothie and it, and you don't notice it's there. We don't have this like cloying fake vanilla flavor that, that I hate so much. So yeah, that, that meant a lot to me not to have sugar in there, as you can tell. <laughs> We're sweet. Right. So L Lanaya says, what's the email address to request the free stuff? So it's only free if you buy the book and send the receipt. Yes. Yep. And it's book at no Um Yeah. So forward your receipt there. And then Matt, well, we've got this, this basically a spreadsheet and then uh, we'll determine, um, you know, if people are in the USA, they get the physical bonuses. You got to order today. I've got, I mean, even now today, the UPS store keeps calling me, come get your boxes. I have tens of thousands of products here to ship out. That's going to take me a whole team of people to do. So if you do live in the U S you get some of those physical uh, product bonuses and everybody gets digital bonuses no matter where you are. And I was even spending two hours last night till two in the morning adding another bonus. Um, so we're, we're, Matt and I are just constantly trying to deliver 
and do the best we can here to provide incredible value. And the fact that the book, while we were sleeping, basically uh, went 40% off and is only $17 and 74 cents last I checked now is the best time. And on a personal note, Chef AJ, and you know, cause we had this heart to heart talk at your house with you and Charles, like this is our shot, you know, this is our shot. We only have until tomorrow, you know, like that's like, that's, that's it. Uh, the sales that count for the New York times bestseller list, uh, end tomorrow night, Pacific uh, midnight, Pacific Standard Time on Saturday night. So anyone, if, if you've been inspired by anything we said today or moved by anything we said, or you've followed us for the years and want to support our work, uh, I, I would love to ask for your support today because it means the world to us. We have a real shot. I mean, really, I mean it. We have a real shot to make that New York Times bestseller list. And our book is selling like crazy. It's the th number 38 on the bestseller list um, of all books right now in the U.S. And uh, with your help, we'll get there and then we'll do another book like this and maybe more about, you know, some other aspect of the, the plant-based fitness lifestyle. And, and we'll take this more mainstream and, and we'll do this together. If you ever guys want to watch, write the plant-based couch potato, I can give you lots of names of people to interview. Okay. <laughs> world-class couch potato. They got to be world-class though. They got to be really good. <laughs> yeah, they, they've got to be a really interesting interview. They've got to be world-class. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have the best sense of humor. Cheryl <laughs> says, yes, it's just 1774 right now. I just ordered. And if you think you're going to get it, why not just get it now? Because like yeah, right. Robert and Matt say, this is going to be, this will make a big difference, not just to their lives, but just the fact that a plant-based book can make the New York Times bestseller list. And so the bonuses are US only if they're physical, Dina, but most of the bonuses are virtual. So you can live yeah. anywhere. Yep. Yep. We just worked like crazy to recruit all these free product coupons and it's just physical, tangible products, you know, food products and snacks and bars and things like that from, you know, relatively healthy plant-based brands uh, that, that I've been working with for a long time. And, and so that's just another, uh, just an extra incentive then that, that, that I'll be shipping out to people. But, um, but yeah, by and large, the bonuses and some are tremendous value. I mean, things that Matt's No Meat Athlete sells for like $127 right? Some of these programs that took them months, 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 yeah, months of work to do with an entire hired team. I mean, you know, lots of investment into it. And you get that because we know what's, we know what's at stake here. I mean, can you imagine a plant-based athlete book? That's one of the most popular books in the world. And now it's going to get major attention, TV, national radio, all this stuff and move this movement forward. That's exciting. And we can all take part in that. So if you are going to get the book anyway, you might as well save. The price could go up anytime. You might as well save on the price if it is Amazon, but also support your local bookstore, get it anywhere. And if you're going to get it anyway, might as well get all the bonuses, the digital bonuses. You can, you can learn and get all these extra meal plans and week in the life and, and, uh, and all these extra resources and accountability workshops and all this stuff that, that, that makes a, a plant-based athlete tick. So uh, we, we just appreciate you. You know, I think this is our last I mean, this is our last interview of the day on our calendar that I know of. We've been at it since early this morning, nonstop. Wow. Um, having eaten. <laughs> People are asking, when can they look forward to the book on Audible? It's, it's there. It's, it's there. there. Yep. Yeah. 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 Karen played it for me. It's, it's, it's really fun to listen to. Uh, Karen has it and has been playing it. Um, so it's there. It's there. should be there in every format. And also uh, worth noting, Book Depository, right, Matt? It should be available worldwide as of next week, perhaps. Yeah, I think you can order it now at Book Depository to get like sometime next week, mid next week, late next week, worldwide. Nice. Right now, so yeah, now. order order by it's got to be by midnight tomorrow, right? Yeah. Or maybe midnight Eastern time tomorrow. Yeah, it's it's one of those midnights. Not sure which. Yeah, one. so might as well do it on Friday. May as well do it now. <laughs> So Debbie says, my husband is a cyclist and I've been trying to get him to eat more plant-based. However, he has trouble digesting beans. Do you have suggestions for things to eat to increase his protein? I don't eat legumes at all. And, and I, I got some blood tests. I got plenty of protein. You don't have to have beans for protein. Plants. Yeah. Um, that, that's the thing. Like, does he actually need to increase his protein would be the question I would, I would ask. And, and maybe he knows that he does. And if that's the case, then yes, there are suggestions. There are lots of things we can, you can pick. Um, Robert, I mean, nuts, nuts and seeds are a great one. Of course, they come with a lot of fat usually, uh, as a result, a lot of calories, but for a lot of athletes, that's okay. Um, so those are really good when I think a cup of peanuts has what 32 grams of protein or something, Robert, a whole lot. Yeah. A lot. And even, even things like oat, oatmeal, you know, you get oatmeal with walnuts. I mean, it just packs full, right. Have a yeah, whole grain. peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. Grains are going to be great. Even green, certain green vegetables, broccoli is going to be good. And broccoli is like just heavy and hearty. Like it's not like kale. I mean, it's, it's substantial, right? 
potatoes, yams, sweet potatoes, those things have, you know, it, it all adds up, you know, it all adds up. And, and that's the point. You could also do something like hemp seeds, uh, which are oh, fantastic protein source, alkaline forming, omega, omega three and six essential fats, they're green food. There's all these different types of, of things. Beans don't have to be part of the equation. And in fact, in fact, uh, Karen and I spent, my wife Karen and I spent three weeks in Southeast Asia. And aside from tofu that was in curry dishes, we didn't have beans, period. Like it just wasn't part of the cuisine there. It, you know, you're just not, you're not eating like burrito bowls and tacos. Mm -hmm. You're just not. And you, you discover that. Uh, and I was in tremendous shape there. I was in really good shape. And it was like, I wasn't focusing on protein from beans. I was eating the most exotic uh, tasty fruits out there and having rice dishes with vegetables and sometimes tofu, but sometimes I would say, no, hold the tofu. I'm not even interested because I didn't even want the extra protein. I just wanted the vegetables and the curry sauces and the, and, and the rice. So, and the fruit. So, uh, there's a lot of ways around it. Another one is, I mean, you can do protein powder, of course you could do, that's not derived from beans. There's plenty of those out there. Um, seitan is like, it depends on your, your stance on gluten and seitan. I think of seitan as a, as a processed food is not a, a super healthful choice. Um, but as far as like protein sources, it's, it's about the most quote unquote efficient plant-based source there is where it's, where it's all protein and, and no, uh, almost nothing else. And it's actually tastes pretty good as, as a meat substitute, um, in a lot of dishes. I, I tend to eat it and a lot of the athletes in the book like it. Uh, but for me, it's, it's sort of an indulgence food. I try to limit that one, but I, I like it. Right. Mary just says, I did my part, ordered the book for my son-in-law. He's thinking about changing his diet and has many athlete questions. I'm hopeful oh. he will turn into plant-based after reading this book. So after tonight at mid or tomorrow at midnight, will you guys be able to get some rest? Yes. Yeah. It's, I, I went to bed at 3.02 in the morning yesterday <laughs> uh, because I was getting a final newsletter out because I discovered this at one in the morning. I mean, I used to see my emails to Matt. I said, Matt, Matt, it's on sale. Like, you know, like basically wake up, tell people because <laughs> this is our chance. And sure enough, uh, we got newsletters out and, and my, in, you know, inbox has been filled with people replying and they ordered uh, get their bonuses. Yeah. 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 The getting their bonus and just letting me know. Cause I, you know, I was saying, Hey, this is our shot here. We're, we have a chance of making this and people are encouraging some ordered three copies. I don't expect everyone listening to order three, five or eight, but some of my good friends and big followers did. Hey, just ordered three. One guy said I ordered five more this morning because it's like under a hundred bucks for five copies where it used to be 30 bucks a copy. So yeah. um, I, I think if they get a thousand, you come to their house, right? Yeah, we will come to your house. We'll do whatever yep. you want, actually. We'll, we'll make you one of every recipe in the book. We'll make you one of everything. We'll stay for the week. We'll sit on your couch. We'll, we'll watch our favorite TV program. We're, we're basically going to move in for a week. Oh, my God. <laughs> be careful, because I think there are people that would do it. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. That would be great. Well, guys, you guys are so great. I'm so in awe of both of you and impressed. And I think this has just been a wonderful uh, pairing, you guys working together on this. It has been really great. And thank you, AJ. We've been very grateful to be hosted by so many people like you and so many audiences have responded so well. So thank you everyone who's uh, listening and interacting and, and ordering the book. It's really uh, could not be more grateful for that. And that's, wow. and that's the great thing with Chef AJ's show is that it, you do hear from all these people. She can say, Allison yeah. just ordered, Stephanie just ordered. Like you can, and, and if we weren't looking at it right here on our camera, you could see it on, on YouTube, all the comments live. <laughs> And Chef AJ, I just want to say on a personal note, you have put me on your show probably like, you know, four or five times recently. I just, I just well, you're my favorite. You're, you're actually remember like at the beginning when the show started, I said, if somebody cancels, will you be on? And you always said yes, but then nobody's canceled. So I figured, Hey, I owe you a few, you know, so I, we I, actually put a video today of you making the brownies. We actually added a video to YouTube today. Yeah. I just appreciate it. It's uh, well, we appreciate you guys because, like I said to you on the cruise, you guys are the cool kids, and you're going to get more people to go vegan than I ever could in my lifetime. So I appreciate your work so much, and you guys do so much to help so many people. And I'm not worried about. I, I know it's it's a fait accompli. It's it's happening. I just I you know you get a feeling, and it's it's going to be. So get some rest. It's you, yeah. You and then then I'm thinking then once you and Matt are New York Times bestselling author, what I'm thinking is you can do like a tug of war with Robbie and Cyrus. Because they're New York Times bestselling. <laughs> we can see who wins that one. <laughs> yeah, we just talked to those guys today doing videos. Yeah. We're, we're just doing a nonstop interviews, doing whatever we can as a final push here. And um, and this is the last scheduled one. I'm sure we'll probably go live on Instagram, me and Matt, later. Uh, but thank you for being the final one of the day. Where we, we haven't even looked at our email. We haven't we haven't eaten today. We haven't. Well, we actually, Matt, Matt had a couple of bites before he started. I had a Larbar. I had a Larbar before we started. 
It's three hours later. And guys, you know, another way you can help too is just share this broadcast and tell people about it. Of course. You know? And if you're asking where to order the book, you got to look in the show notes. It's right underneath the video, but only on YouTube. You're not probably not going to see it on Facebook. So, well, guys, thank you so much. And uh, I hope you'll still talk to me after you become New York Times bestselling authors next week. <laughs> You are a big part of this. I bet they will oh, yeah. always keep talking. Thank you, so it, it is so fun to be part of other people's success, especially when you guys are promoting plants. What could be better? Right. And you look lovely and vibrant today, by the way. I, oh, I, I love the colors and you just, you're, you look stunning. Right, thank yeah. you. And next time you come on, wear your red sweater. And we'll do a little Mr. Roberts thing. Mr. <laughs> Rogers. You're Mr. <laughs> Roberts though, actually. Mr. Roberts. All right. Well, thank you guys. And guys, please order it now because you'll make such a difference. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have Justina Froese on the show. She's Dr. Lyle's pick for people that suffer with binging. Do any athletes, do any athletes have discordant eating? Did you notice? Yeah. Yeah. Some have dealt with it, including Dotsie Bausch. It was a mm -hmm. huge, huge issue in her life um, that she had to overcome. Um, you know, eating issues, drug issues, addiction issues. There's, there's a lot and people have been over, been able to overcome that. And those are part of the stories in the book. Great. Thanks. And guys get the book, get the bonuses. Thanks, Matt and Robert. Take care. All right. Thanks.